Hello and welcome to NETWORK. My name is Spumela Lezwende with your technology and social media news. We hope you still are safe and staying indoors where you are, leaving home if you really, really must. It's a CBC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. This week, uh, Twitter poll is asking you if you're going to continue using the WhatsApp service as they are continuing with their privacy policy that they had uh, blocked in the past because of a backlash that happened internationally. Results of that are coming up later in the program. Firstly, here's what's coming up tonight. There's a standoff in Australia between tech giants Facebook and Google and the government because of the uploading of news on their platforms. We ask if that would be extending to the African continent as well. We look at various video on demand options that we have here in South Africa. And in our conversation, we chat about air fiber. Australia has passed a new legislation that forces big tech giants to pay news organizations for the contents they use. We ask whether this should come to Africa too. For a long while, newsrooms have been struggling to make money. Lots of news consumers have not been paying for news they find online, and many have been getting information for free on platforms like Google and Facebook. I get most of the news on Twitter because I spend a lot of time on social media day and night, so I think Twitter for me is the best because first of all, it's fast and you can simply follow the trend to see other hot breaking news. So I think Twitter is the best place to get news for me. Get most of my news from social media and by social media, I don't mean uh, random people's ideas or opinions and things, but I look through social media for different media publications and some of the articles that they post and, and then syndicate through social media. And I follow those links and that's where I get most of, of, of my news to keep up to date. But the Australian government has said such free access to news can't go on much longer in the Pacific nation. They're forcing the two tech giants to negotiate a pay model with news organizations. At first, Facebook resisted and blocked news content on its platform in Australia before bringing it back a week later. Some analysts say these platforms are news distributors too, among other things, and therefore they must pay. Well, it's world first legislation that places a legislative safety net under negotiations between the tech platforms who have been found to be advertising monopolies and media players across Australia. That will lead to an exchange in um, value which will fund journalism. So what it means is there'll be more funds for public interest journalism in Australia than there were a few months ago. Initially, Google has said it would pull out of Australia if this happened. The Australian government did not back down. Then Google changed its strategy. The search engine has now come up with some deals to pay several news organizations. News stories or news organizations work and journalists work will still remain on uploadable on, 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 on social media that is uh, Facebook and Google. But now what's needed is to negotiate a payment plan or now everyone benefits in a much more decent manner. In Africa, Google doesn't pay newsrooms for news content, but has an initiative that funds what they find to be innovative tools that news organizations and freelancers come up with. They call it Google News Initiative Innovation Challenge and say 2.2 million rand is set aside for those that can come up with strategies to help newsrooms increase revenue. In parts of Africa, we've seen governments shutting down the internet and social media platforms like Facebook. Analysts say those that do this wouldn't be worried about newsrooms making more money, but would be selfish autocratic states that want to limit access to information. We've seen um, African governments blocking the internet, um, but we cannot say it was in the context of um, the, the political economy of uh, news giants and uh, or news media and the tech giants. It was outside that. It was, or it has always basically been about curtailing people's uh, freedoms of expression. Every time 
the internet uh, blockade, blockades in, in Africa, it's all about preserving this, the political status quo, which is usually dictatorships. There are countries that would use Australia as a case study to see if they too can assist news organizations get money out of these tech giants. WhatsApp has started sending messages to users so they update their WhatsApp on their devices. Now they got a lot of flack earlier in the year and they had to stop their process because it seems like they want to keep a lot of our data. Initially, WhatsApp had said that those that don't accept their new privacy policy, which allows them to share data with Facebook and other platforms, won't have access to the messaging app. There was an outcry and a backlash. They reviewed this plan and have come back to say they now expect users to accept the changes to be implemented on May 15th. They say users that do not accept the new terms will be able to receive notifications and make WhatsApp calls, but won't be allowed to send or receive texts. Social media lawyer Diane Anna Schwartz says that this is okay. They are within their rights to do so. The reason is that they obviously run the platform in terms of their terms and conditions. So it's not a public, um, you know, company. And WhatsApp is then therefore entitled to, you know, um, amend their product or change their product when uh, they feel the need to do so. At first, many users said they were going to stop using the service. Millions downloaded Signal and Telegram. Those we spoke to say they will now stay with WhatsApp. Well, I think in this case, I'll, I'll accept the policy because I heard that my conversations will, be, will not be compromised. I am going to stay with uh, WhatsApp. I have no problems with uh, what they intend to do. Our information, data is shared anyway. And I find it uh, quite uh, handy and useful because you can share information, you can share pictures and share stories and communicate with your friends, family and with whoever. But I think I'll just accept because Google and Facebook for me has been um, sharing our information with other users and um, I've never been a, a victim of identity theft or anything like that. So, and WhatsApp is very cheap or affordable for me to communicate with my family and friends. Would a move such as this be detrimental to the messaging app? Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram are multi-billion dollar organizations. Um, I think it will have an impact, yes, on them. However, it may not be to such an extent if they are willing to say, well, we're going to give you limited access if you don't agree to our privacy uh, policy. Um, maybe they have weighed it up and they've decided that, look, it's, it's worth it. Um, we'd rather have our privacy policy accepted. But let's not forget that we still have our information regulator in South Africa that is still in the process of reviewing the privacy policy to bring it in line with our South African laws. Some users have started receiving messages to accept a new WhatsApp update. Now, YouTube has recently announced that they have funding for African content creators in their Black Voices Fund. We've also seen Netflix producing more South African content and streaming more continental content. BBC Brit has also said that their Britbox is coming to South Africa. It's also a streaming platform. The SABC has teamed up with Telcom One for their content to be streamed online too. We've also seen the growth of the popularity of adult platform only fans in South Africa. This means that a lot more South Africans are looking for content online and a lot more of these providers are coming to South Africa to distribute their content. Misa will beat any fixed line voice or internet quote. We mean it. With that Telcom has launched a streaming service called Telcom One. They're in partnership with the SABC on some of its content. Telcom One as a platform is a youth focused platform and we were really looking for a lot of localized content that really speaks to a, a variety of genres. So one of which was a comedy, we looked at lifestyle, uh, and we looked at Moby so So trying to get people and new and upcoming people, uh, producers to actually present and bring to us um, content that speaks to that youth market within those particular genres. 
Lately, they've had a competition for local content creators who want their work to be on the platform. This was really just our step to say we're really looking for unique content within the mobile space um, and, 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 and these are the, the areas and genres and the type of content that we'd have. But we're looking at building on this and we will definitely have opportunities for new commissions to come through in that space. Mom. I have something to tell you. Mom. I'm pregnant. They're not the only ones. Recently, YouTube announced that their Black Voices Fund has given money to South Africans too. We invited creators that previously participated in our YouTube Black events and programs to apply. We then evaluated their applications based on a whole bunch of factors such as channel performance and engagement metrics. We will have more to share about the next round of applications for the grants in the coming months. <laughs> This seems to be a massive shift in assisting South Africans who want their content to be streamed on various platforms. DSTV has been reported to be losing premium subscribers because of this shift. Queen, I suggest you keep a low profile. Now there's um, a dire need for black stories and it would be black people themselves who produce that content and we need stories from the soil. <laughs> I have a billion reasons to smile. My family and... My broadband, says DSTV Premium, is more expensive than certain fiber offerings with Netflix and Amazon Prime. To take advantage of this growing online viewing market are BBC and ITV. I've never seen you before. No. I'm not good at opening up to people. Life seems pretty perfect. The British TV content providers have said their streaming service, a Britbox, will be coming to South Africa too. She needs help. You know, when Queen is around, anything can happen. While online content streaming is growing in South Africa, the worry is that many still rely on mobile phone data to access this content. And a story we've heard many times before is that data prices are still high in South Africa. So growth in this space will be slow for a bit longer. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. After the break... We chat about air fiber. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Welcome back. Now, there are various options that are available to South Africans to connect to the Internet. But the problem is that a lot of them are concentrated here in the Johannesburg area or the rest of Gauteng. The world would not be what it has become today without the Internet. It touches just about every aspect of how we live, work, socialize, shop and play. It is therefore possible to connect to the internet via a range of devices these days, though desktop and laptops and mobile phones are the most common. In order for any device to actually get online though, requires signing up for a specialized service for accessing the internet. For example, a DSL connection might come through your smartphone company, whereas a cable connection provides an internet connection through a cable modem and operates over cable TV lines. Satellite access the internet via satellite in Earth's orbit. Wireless or Wi-Fi, as the name suggests, does not use telephone lines or cables to connect to the internet. Instead, it uses radio frequency. MTN launched air fiber as an alternative to cable fiber. The wireless internet service will use MTN's existing reception network. However, 
people should consider some of the following factors before selecting an internet package speed cost availability reliability and convenience all right, so that's producer Sandile Hlangani there um, telling us about the different options that you can possibly have if you want internet connection in your home. But right now is Calvin Carlitz, who is with me. He's MD of Supersonic at MTN. And they've been rolling out something, or rather testing, something called air fiber. And he tells me that it um, has been tested in parts of Gauteng here in South Africa. Um, Calvin, hello, and thank you very much for being a part of our network. Maybe if you can start by telling us what air fiber actually is yeah thanks for having me um, so air fiber is a product that we've developed specifically to ease the rollout of high-speed connectivity into your sort of secondary towns peri-urban and even townships so it really allows us to give the same type of quality as you would with a normal fiber and wired connection but we're doing it wirelessly, wirelessly and hence the the air fiber name and and, and connectivity all right, so what technology is used to ensure that this actually happens? So it's a technology that, uh, it's actually a proprietary technology um, that uh, is patented in, in the US. So it's a product that we've been working on for two and a half years, or project that we're working on for two and a half years. Um, and it's finally come to fruition. So we're really excited about the possibilities because it lowers the barrier to entry for you know, your, your lower to middle income households. Um, but still giving the same kind of quality that you would if you had a normal fibre connection. And I think that's the really big differentiator, yeah. You've mentioned that this is for the less affluent areas, but um, if, let's say I live in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg and um, I want this particular product, is it something that you will consider to give to me? Is it something that I can have? So our main aim is not that. So we've got, there's a lot of fibre in that area. So we don't actually want to overbuild, which is, the, is the, typically the term used in, 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 in sort of spreading coverage in, in existing coverage areas. So our focus is to rather go into areas that don't have fiber. So we would use an existing fiber network if you wanted connectivity in, a, in, a, in, in, in the northern suburbs, but we won't be rolling out in those areas. And certainly not phase one or two, that's for sure. All right, so you've mentioned that the townships are going to benefit. Um, what about the deep rural areas that are far removed from any urban centre? You know, one of the nice things is if you take your, your small rural towns, um, so up in Limpopo or, or the Eastern Cape, etc., this product can go up to 15 kilometres from the closest base station. So even if you are pretty remote, but there's a, a decent sized town, and, or a small town for that matter, you know, 15 kilometers from that point, we can then still provide coverage to that area. So, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight. I mean, MTN uh, has done a fantastic job in getting 98% LTE or 4G coverage, um, but it's taken time. So it's gonna take time here as well, but at least there's a focused product on delivering proper home connectivity to the, the, the rest of South Africa and, and trying to bridge that digital divide, as you rightly say. All right, so let's say I want it in my area or in my home. What's the process right now? So at the moment, we're running an expression of interest or show, your, show my interest campaign. And that's really just to say, where do we roll out first? So where's the biggest need in the country? Because we know it's needed everywhere, okay? But, you know, we, we don't have endless amount of capex. So we actually have to slowly but surely roll out into the areas that are showing the highest interest. So that's what we're doing. Um, that campaign closes at probably the middle of March and then we'll start to roll out so we're looking for probably 1st of April to put our first commercial um, towers up so we've got a lot of towers on, on proof of concept so we did proof of concept in Mamelodi and in, in Fairlands here in, here in Joburg um, and it was extremely successful so yeah I think from the 1st of April we'll start to start to roll and then we've got big targets to meet. All right, and uh, the pricing for this, uh, what, are, what are we looking for here? What are we looking at here, rather? We specifically focused on, on, on getting a product that we could uh, lower the price. So our entry level is 399, which is a five meg unlimited connection. Then it goes up to 999 for 100 megabits per second. But if I give you the price point, so it's five meg um, at 399, 10 meg at 499, 20 at 599, uh, 50 at 799 and then 100 at 999. So it really is a great product for your sort of low to middle income. Um, 
And listen, if the guys want to go for the 100 meg, that's fantastic because we can offer it and the technology does allow us to offer it. All right, so thank you very much for being a part of our network, Kelvin. Now, Kelvin Condit there is MD of Supersonic at MTN in South Africa. And with that, let's take a short break. SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Welcome back. Here's what else took place in the rest of the world in the tech space. Beloved Snoopy and his friends from the Peanut Gang are staring in a new animated series for the streaming TV era. Just don't expect them to be texting or watching TikTok. The new technology, I think that's where... That's where we in the creative part of the um, Mr. Schultz's studio have drawn the line. Charlie Brown won't have a cell phone and there's barely, there's barely television and it's the old handset um, on the table in the room when the phone rings. So I think that those things are going to be staple items of the of the comic strip. Stories for the Snoopy Show are extracted from decades of Peanuts adventures in comic strips. Viewers will see familiar exclamations of good grief, plant psychiatric advice from Lucy and friends. Sparky always said that Snoopy was patterned after his the dog he had when he was a teen, maybe 14 to 18, I'm not sure exactly that lifespan of that dog, but um, but Snoop, but Spike, Spike was the dog, and Spike was actually the dog that Sparky had drawn a, believe it or not, a Ripley's Believe It or Not cartoon and sent it in, and Ripley published it. So that was Sparky's first published drawing when he was 14. So that dates Spike back to at least when he was 14. Charles Gore's comic strip debuted in 1950 and ran until the day after the cartoonist's death in February 2000 at the age of 77. They both discussed the franchise's future before his death. And he always said that, Sp that Spike was so smart and he knew 50 different words and that if you said to Spike, go down to the basement and get a potato, he would go down and get a potato. And, um, but other neighborhood kids, one of whom has told us this story and made us roar with laughter, said that Spike may have been nice in the house, but he was a terror in the neighborhood and that everybody wanted to steer clear of him and not let him get anywhere near them. The pacing will be faster for modern audiences. In the US, Boston Dynamics dog-like robot spot can now not only find your slippers all by itself, it can bring them to you thanks to the new addition of an arm. The four-legged spot went on sale last June starting at $74,500 US dollars and can perform inspections and data collection. This week, the company unveiled an expanded product line. Right now, the robot's just sensing the world. But the moment that it can sense the world and interact with it based on what it's sensing, that starts opening up a wide variety of new applications for, for Spot. Even so, Spot can now manually grasp, lift, carry, place, and drag objects. The Spot arm was teased in a jaw-dropping video showing Spot dancing along other Boston Dynamics robots to the song Do You Love Me. With physical automation expected to rise, Perry said the newly equipped Spot was poised to help humans in difficult or dangerous scenarios. Where we say, that's a thing I want you to grab, go grab it. And the robot does everything else. It will figure out a, a way to get there. It will figure out a way to um, you know, reach out, grab the object, and it will figure out how to pull it back at the velocity that you told it to. On the public perception of robots like Spot, Perry believes it's only a matter of time before they are regarded as simple tools to make our lives easier. Earlier in the year, a lot of people went and downloaded Signal, 
and Telegram, which are WhatsApp's rivals. This was after WhatsApp had said that you had to accept their privacy policy if you wanted to continue using the platform. They then decided to stall that for a bit. They are probably just giving us time to digest it a little bit because they've come back and they said that they are still continuing with the privacy policy. So this week, our Twitter poll is asking you if you will continue using the WhatsApp service now that they've said that their privacy policy is not going anywhere. In the majority is 35% of you who say yes. 32% of those that responded to our poll say no. And 33% of you say you don't know yet. All right, and that's it. That's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is News Network at sabc.co.za on email. For me, it's Pumela Lezondi and the rest of the network team. Have a good one. It's good night.